Hello friends, Tanya here for Trinity Stamps and today I am making 13 cards. Yes, 13 cards. Citrus Bliss is what we're going for here. I have the Lemon and Leaves Layering Stencil Set. It does come with all of the masks that pop out also, but we're going to use just the layering. I'm taking a full sheet of white cardstock here. This is um, 80 pound white cardstock and I'm using Distress Oxides to create a dimensional look with my stenciling here. I'm going to stencil this six times, two in yellows, two in greens, two in oranges, and I'm going to do some slightly different techniques with each grouping. I took the lightest of the yellows and stenciled all of the lemon first and then I'm going back with the other two colors. I've got squeezed lemonade, uh, mustard seed, and I think wild honey was my darkest color there. Now I'm using some greens. We've got mowed lawn and I'm going in with the darker color first and some twisted citron. And after I have all of the these colors in, I decide that it's not quite the color I want and I come back with a little bit of the squeezed lemonade and uh, go over it with that also. And that helps smooth it out and give it a little more of that bright color. <clears throat> the oranges we're using are dried marigold, carved pumpkin, and um, crackling campfire. Now that's a really dark orange, but it does work well, especially when we come back over the entire orange with the dried marigold. It just mellows it all out. That's the magic of Distress Oxides. They blend together and you can uh, blend a lighter color over a dark color. Now between each color grouping, I did clean my stencil with a little bit of soapy water. I keep it in this great big jug on our spray bottle in my craft room. And that is what I use to clean my stamps and my, my stencils and all of the things, my desk, everything. And I decided I needed a big a bottle after uh, having to refill it too often. Now I was going to do the branches next, but I decided that it was easier to line this up by using the leaves next. And as with all of the Trinity Stamps layering stencils, there's an etched outline for the other elements of the dies, or excuse me, the stencil set. The leaves have the lemons on them and that is just the easiest thing to line up. I'm only going to show you the leaves from the limes because I wanted to use a slightly different color combo. I used the mold lot and pine needles so that they were different than the lime. So we have a slightly darker color for the leaves for the uh, lime panel. Next, I'm using gathered twigs to stencil in the branches. And this goes pretty well. The only thing you gotta watch for is that spot where I keep putting my finger. When you're blending, that will pull up and cause some um, smearage like we have there. So I did start putting my magnet over that spot. Next we're going to take some Glitz Glitter Gel in white and you could use clear, they have a holographic one, you could use all kinds of colors. If you've got orange, green, and yellow you could use those colors too. The white is pretty versatile because it, uh, it a, picks up some of the color and it's a neutral tone. So I'm partially uh, stenciling these, just using a little bit of glitz glitter gel on part of each of the oranges. I'm going to do that on the lemons and the limes also. And for these, I decided to take some of my mica spray stains and do some spattering. And I did take some liquid pixie dust and spattered that all over this card panel also. And I did like how this looked, but after I did it, I thought, oh, I really like this, but I wonder how it would have looked if I just left the spatters off. So I went back and I actually made my life a little easier and instead of partially glitter glitz pasting these, I filled, I used my, um, oh, what's it called? 
it's a large silicone spatula thingy and use that to spread it all the way across and I like how that turned out too. Next I'm going to take a bunch of dies to do some layering and we're going to do some mini slimline. I've got some mini slimline stitched layers, I've got mini slimline uh, dainty scallop and I've got the slimline version of both of those also and I'm going to die cut these out of the spattered versions and I can get two cards out of each of these panels. I can get a slimline and a mini slimline out of one of these nine by six by nine stenciled panels. So I'm going to die cut all of these <clears throat> And then I took a coordinating cardstock and die cut the uh, dainty scallop layers to go behind these. And I still have a little square of the stenciled area left. I did have to set the Glitz Glitter Gel um, detail. I had to set that aside for a good, I think I let it sit for an hour just to be sure that it was um, well dried before I started doing my die cutting. Here you can see those layered up. And next we're going to do some four bar cards. Now I, there is a new die set that creates a envelope and has some layering that you could use with this, but this is what I used this time. I also pulled out the Simply Sentimental U stamps and dies and stamped the various different fonts of U on some colored cardstock. I used whatever colors coordinated with the layering panels that I was using for each of these. And I actually, I think this was a four and a half, no, five and a half by eight and a half inch panel, probably, and stamped these twice. I flipped it and got another round of the stamping and I'm going to heat emboss these with some sparkle embossing powder. Now this creates a tone on tone raised effect and it also adds some extra shimmer and it actually turns out fantastic. It was just exactly what I wanted. I wanted something that had some uh, oomph but wasn't overpowering. I really wanted those stenciled and and glimmer pasted panels to take the center stage of these projects. I just love all of those bright citrus tones, which is, you know, citrus season right now. January is definitely the time to get your lemons, limes, and oranges from the grocery store. So we're going to use the coordinating dies to die cut all of these different sentiments, and I don't show you all of the colors. <clears throat> but I did do a lot of die cutting. All of these cards took me mm, several hours to create, I want to say, but it is 13 cards. And I did have, you know me, I always have to create things from scratch. I just really love building patterns, if you want, if I want to be honest. I love it. And all this lovely die cutting and heat embossing, it's, it's totally my jam. This is why I craft, because I enjoy the process of all of these different steps. Even if it did take me all day to make 13 cards, it's okay. It's what I love. I hope that you are as, as passionate about this hobby as I am or at least if you're buying the supplies, you are. So we have these three different kinds of U, and some of them are long and fine, and some are chunky. There are a whole bunch of sub-sentiments that come in these stamp sets also, the Simply Meant Sentimental line, and I lined up a whole bunch of them on a piece of white cardstock, heavyweight white cardstock, and I'm going to stamp these four times on two different strips of cardstock. <clears throat> and then I'm going to use the banner die from the Simply Sentimental U die set. There's one long banner in there, and there's two banners in the four bar card builder stamp set. I think that's what it's called. Anyway, it's been around for a while, and if you don't have it, I've said this a few times, it is one of those essentials. 
uh, that everyone should have in their stash, even if it's just for those banners. However, four bar cards are pretty fun to make also, especially if you're using or if you're making mini slim lines that are six by six, if you cut a piece of six of uh, eight and a half by 11 cardstock down to six by six, you have a piece of five by eight and a half inch wide piece of cardstock left, which trims down to a five by seven panel very nicely. So I'm going to take all of these dies and I'm going to die cut all of these sentiment strips out. Some of them require some partial die cutting. Some are going to have just a fishtail on one end, but here we go. Tons of sentiments all done fairly quickly. So I'm going to make a four bar card first. This is um, the orange, not spattered version. And I did take the, um, what is that called? Gift card holder panel from the coffee mug card die set. Um, I used that fairly recently and it reminded me that it had this gift card holder panel in it. And we're going to adhere this to the inside of the card. I am putting it on the left side so that when you open the card, you're gonna see your message first and then you're going to see the gift card. And I am going to um, line up the letters using the grid on my, well, you could use your, your craft mat for that or all kinds of different grid areas, but I have a grid on the back of this heavyweight acrylic block that I'm using to add a little weight to the the card while it dries. I've adhered the um, main panel with a little bit of uh, cardstock, scrap cardstock on the back of it for some dimension. And I'm using my masking tape to keep all of those letters in line as I adhere them to the card front. It's super easy that way. And we're gonna put thank you on this one. And after this glue has had a little time to set, I'll peel back that masking tape and that is card number one. How fast was that? Um, we're going to do a slim line, a four bar and a mini slim line just to show you how each of those come together because it's going to be the same for each of these cards. I am adding a, a layer of scrap cardstock behind each of the layers and we'll adhere this to the front of a slimline card. So next we're going to use the, um, the U, the long loopy U, and each of these sentiments also has a layer of cardstock behind them to add a little extra height and, and stability. I really like to do that. We're going to add our banner, and that has a little bit of coaster blank behind it. Coaster blank is simply pulp board that coasters for under your cup at a restaurant is made out of, only it has no advertising. Uh, I have a link for that in the description box below if you're interested in that. I have questions about that every time. Apparently it's not something many people know about. So this is our mini slim line, and I, as you can see, I did the orange first, and I'm doing a line. I did a lime for the slim line, and this is the, excuse me, I did a lemon for the slim line, and a lime for the mini slim line. We're using one of the big blocky fonts of you here, and I'm going to not completely center this because I have a very long sentiment strip, which does fit on the mini slim line card but I'm going to slightly offset this so it's not completely centered under the U, but it is fairly centered on the card front. That is card number three. And um, I made a total of 12 cards with that lemon, lime, and orange combo. It was a lot of fun, I enjoyed it. Next, uh, this is my bonus card. I had some things in my stash that I created um, long ago for that gnome. I'd colored that last year and that hello was from a card I made the beginning of January and I didn't like how it looked on the card. So we have these two elements that I just needed to put on a card. So this is our bonus card. It's going to be a five by seven card and I have the good morning sunshine sten layering stencils here. I'm using the back of my misty since it's magnetic 
to um, here hold my stencils in place as I'm inking them up. I'm using some uh, magnet bars to hold those in place. And these are the Atelier Ink on 3 inks in Bee Sting Yellow and uh, Marigold Orange. And it looks like I'm having to work at this pretty hard because guess what? I need to re-ink my ink pads. I don't know why I didn't stop and just do it right then and there. I have since gone through and re-inked all of my Atelier Ink on 3 inks. I use them a lot and it's been a while since I re-inked them. So it's important to re-ink your ink pads. I think I said this earlier this month also. I'm finding lots of my ink pads need to be re-inked. Little ink pad maintenance goes a long way. So maybe I need to put that on my schedule and just get them all re-inked all through my collections. For the first set of uh, sun rays, I'm using the orange and the yellow. And the second set, we are going to use um, Goddess Green and Trinity Teal. I'm going to lay the green down first. And these needed to be re-inked re re also, except for the Trinity Teal. That is a really intense color and it did not seem to be dried out. So I'm going to put a little bit of that green ink under the edge of the, or not under, but below the border of that stencil because I want to create a ground for my gnomes to sit on. And here we're going to add the Trinity Teal. We want that nice glow effect. I like the two-tone effect here. I love all of the extra depth that adds. Well, look at that. So we're going to take our little gnomes and our hello and lay those on the panel so we can get our placement right. We're going to take our modern embossed uh, layers here and we're going to pick a size that works good. This is a good size, but I want it a little smaller. I just want to uh, make those edges a little less or a little closer to our gnomes. We'll tape this down and run this through the die cutting machine to get our panel. And I did take a larger die and die cut some yellow cardstock with that. And we are going to put some layers of Oh, nope, let's stop. We're going to use some uh, liquid pixie dust to add some spatters because why not? I love spatters, especially the liquid pixie dust spatters. They add a nice touch of texture and shine without being uh, very disruptive to your pattern. I'm taking some coaster blank. Nope, these are cardstock scraps and I am adhering them to the back of this cardstock. I think these are actually two layers of cardstock glued together, so it's a little extra there. And we're going to do the same for the other panel. I'm going to adhere this to a five by seven heavyweight white cardstock card base. And you can see that this has a neat and tidy narrow border around the yellow cardstock. Here we go again with more cardstock scraps to glue behind the panel. I like these for a little extra dimension and to add a little extra stability to our panels. I like my cards to have some heft to them and to be quite sturdy. <clears throat> I'm always making sure that I'm hearing things the right way because if, you, if I don't check I can guarantee you I will adhere it upside down on my card base. It's happened. I have actually added a little bit of coaster blank behind the gnomes and behind the hello. I did split that um, the layers. There's two layers of coaster blank behind the bottom portion of the hello so that it'll rest evenly over the gnomes because we're going to overlap those a little bit. So we have some rainbow foil paper to die cut the hello, and that's layered on some vellum. We're using the andradite and citrine gems to add some sparkle throughout our card front. I did use the Sub Sentiment Sunshine. That is from the Simply Sentimental 
Hello die set, stamp and die set. I am loving the Simply Sentimental series. They have so many amazing different things that you can use. And we're going to use a couple sentiments from the in, for the inside of this card also. I just layered those up and I have an open-sided uh, stamp positioner that works really well for these oversized cards. That is my collection of, of cards for this video. I'm going to lay out all of the cards that were created so you can see what all of them turned out. <clears throat> and I, I still am in love with that lemon and leaves stencil. If you have it, pull it out and play with it. Why not, right? So we've got three slimline, three mini slimline, and eight of the four bar sized. Now most of these I put, actually all of them, I put the gift card holder on the inside because I plan to use these when we go on trips to give out a little something. Let me know which of these things was your favorite. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please take a, a moment to do that now. <clears throat> if you're interested in any of the supplies that I used, check that description box below. They're always listed and linked there. And until next time, here's a couple more videos we thought you might enjoy. Until next time, bye-bye.